today we're going to do a Pika boot install. Um, it's an IPL replacement mod chip for the GameCube, it's open source, uh, very cheap and easy to install. First we're going to look at the um, parts you're going to need to do this. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico, they're about £10 maximum really, not very expensive at all. You're going to need a mounting of your choice, whether you want to go inside the uh, GameCube or outside, I've chose to go underneath. You're going to need an SD to SP2 adapter to allow the uh, SD card to mount to load your Swiss files and ROMs in. My mounting was from uh, Thingverse and uh, my Pico was from eBay, so nice and easy. Um, you're going to need an SD card formatted to FAT32 or XFAT. You're going to need some wires, good quality wires, not too thick, copper core. This is the guy that's created it. I'm not going to pronounce his name, but he goes by WebHDX. Uh, he comes from Poland, really talented programmer. Um, this is the uh, way of loading the uh, Pika Boot software onto the Raspberry Pi. You connect up your USB to the Pi, you either press this little external button like I've added or your actual button on the circuit board itself. This puts the um, Raspberry Pi into like a load mode where you can then drag and drop the file the um, you know from the website, the latest release, on straight onto the Raspberry Pi and it self configures and ejects very very easy. As you can see from the video at the moment I have I added a um, an external boot pin so that I didn't have to strip the GameCube when I wanted to update it because this is really moving fast and um, you know there's a lot of updates. So I wanted to make this nice and easy to upgrade in the future. Um, following the drawings online there's five wires to install onto the Raspberry Pi. There's a ground pin, there's a um, 3.3 volt um, power supply, um, you bridge a couple of pins but it's all very very explanatory on the uh, website. That's the um, bridge pin there you can see. I've just installed and uh, I think this one's going to be the um, 3.3 volts and the uh, earth. It's good to use different coloured wires because it helps identify from the board to the actual you know, GameCube itself so you can identify what, uh, like I've used black for earth which is you know just a common colour, I've used blue for the 3.3 volts, you can use whatever you want uh, as long as you know which wire goes where it's easy and, you know, to transfer the wires from the, the uh, Raspberry Pi over to the main board of the GameCube. Like I say, fairly simple installation, just getting these wires. Uh, I think these are pin six and seven, which are joined with a, a single wire. I've gone with this installation, like I say, because I just wanted it a bit easier, just so that I don't, I'm faffing around in the future if I need to update it. A little bit of super glue here, just to um, hold the board in place, because when you push the micro SD card in, it sometimes pushes the board out. Okay, that's, that's all uh, ready to rock and roll. So, um, move on now to, um, stripping the GameCube. Um, very well documented. You just use um, a game bit screwdriver which is obviously specific to Nintendo stuff. Uh, once you've got the top off then it's just a series of these Phillips screws all the way around the uh, DVD drive um, casing and heat shield. So once you've got all of those screws out the um, DVD drive will lift straight off and so will the power supply. That's what that red and black wire is. So it's not going to take too long just to pop this shell off. I have sped it up but uh, it's still an amazing amount of screws. I've no idea why Nintendo chose to go with so many screws. I don't know what the hell they thought was going to happen. Okay so off pops the uh, DVD drive that leaves the um, heatsink exposed and the main board for the GameCube. So the next thing is to remove the six screws that hold the heatsink on top of the uh, main processors for the GameCube. Okay, so don't wobble the uh, heatsink too much because you can damage the board. There are things that you can snap off and uh, there's been quite a few cases where you put it all back together and the GameCube doesn't function uh, because you broke some on the board. So uh, what I'm going to do is feed through the wires, you know, mount the um, Raspberry Pi underneath, feed the wires up through the casing up into the main board area as you can see so I'm just uh, getting the wires stripped now ready to um, solder onto the main board just twisting them and uh, separating them and just going to tin them individually just so that it's nice and easy to take when I'm soldering to the main board so I'm just going to uh, get everything tinned up nice and ready and then it's just a lot less hassle when you came to actually uh, join them together that uh, there's some nice 
fresh solder and some fresh flux there just so everything goes a bit easier. Nothing too strenuous here. Um, everything's well documented. There's some nice pictures on the tutorial website. Um, like I say, you can Google this and straight away the GitHub page comes up. Um, the instructions are all well documented and nicely laid out. It is probably one of the easiest installs you're going to do if you're okay with soldering. Um, you know, if you're not particularly confident solder you know, person, then you know, yeah, you you might want to get somebody else to help. But um, you know, for anybody that's done some soldering, this is pretty simple. This side, this bit of it's really simple. There's a, this chip the uh, you've got to solder to there. Um, obviously, jumper four and jumper six and seven. Uh, go to these pins and um, they're a little bit more tricky um, just got to be careful I've in this particular um, part of the video I, I think I've used the wrong sort of size wire I think I should have gone a lot smaller um, and gone copper core um, I did have some um, boot issues with this um, install to be you know, bluntly honest um, so I actually have um, taken off these wires and gone with a smaller gauge and a copper core install um, this did boot but there was the odd occasion that it just didn't boot quite right. Something was not quite right. Um, I checked and double checked all the connections. And after a little bit of Googling, I realised that um, maybe my wires were a little bit too long. And I should have used a copper core. Um, my heat sink um, came off okay. As you can see, none of the pads were damaged. Um, you know, if you have be a little, bit un, you know, a little bit too rough with it. Or you try and pull the um, heat sink straight up. It tends to tear the um, uh, heatsink, and you can't use it again. It's not. It's not really worth using again. You have to replace it. In this instance, obviously, uh, I managed to um, remove it very gently and got it to stay intact. A um, little bit of captain tape there. I'm just a little bit nervous that the wire that I've used, obviously in this instance, um, was a little bit too thick, and I, I was just worried that it was going to short on the bottom of the aluminium heatsink. Um, but uh, obviously, I've rendered this obsolete anyway because I have changed the gauge of the wire. Get the heat sink screwed down and uh, just a case of rebuilding the um, GameCube back up. Every, the actual installation is pretty much complete now. As you can see it, it probably took about half an hour from start to finish from stripping the GameCube to actually installing the wires and putting it back together so it's not a, a you know, massively long installation. Um, when I did revisit this, um, I installed LEDs into the controller ports, as you'll see a bit later on. I've also done a um, battery mod just so I can change the battery when it goes a bit flat. I had a little few issues with the direction I wanted to mount this wire. I had to bend that little flap of, of um, steel up because it, would, it wouldn't allow the um, wires to come up from underneath. So I just bent that up and um, just there. And that allowed me then to get the wires to come up. So everything nice and neat there. So I was really pleased with that. So just get the um, million screws put back in. And the uh, power supply and all the other bits. And we'll, uh, near enough, getting ready to um, give this a go. I do actually own a um, GameCare SD loader. And um, the HDMI conversion on another GameCube. But I was really curious to understand and play with um, this mod um, it's you know very very the entry level for this is very very cheap so it really opens this is really going to you know open the doors to the GameCube and, and the popularity of it because the you know the HDMI solutions and the um, you know the SD loader solutions you know you can't get them they're expensive they're a lot more difficult to install and the SD loader is obviously okay because it's just a plug and play um, add-on but um, you know the HDMI conversion obviously is a lot more um, a lot more tricky and a lot and a lot more higher skill level to install um, but I'm you know I am pleased with that but this is really really simple I think that is what makes this this really really worth doing so you get your SD card loaded up with the latest version of um, Swiss on the root of the SD card you change the where it says Swiss RXXX that's just the download number so you just change it to IPL.doll and then add a games folder and put some ROMs on there and pretty much you're ready to rock and roll there are some files like I've added for the GameCube loader, um, so obviously now I've got um, a diskless option to load in GameCube games, but for all intents and purposes that's it done. You know I can update now externally without having to strip or move anything, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, the Viper Shell, I know it's got a full size DVD in there, but um, really really good. So let's uh, 
see what it does. So this is the screen that you're presented with once it boots. Just like normal Swiss, but you've got, like you say, it just boots straight into this menu. Um, you can load your games up, and just like Swiss as normal, everything boots and patches and works absolutely fine. Absolutely great. You know, the way this loads, everything loads up and everything is seamless. Um, it's an it's absolute no-brainer that this is an essential purchase for any GameCube owner. Um, the SD to SP2 adapter allows seamless playback, um, full motion video and loading times are pretty good. So we're you know, really pleased with that. It, it, it works absolutely fine. So from a future perspective for me with this GameCube, if I need to update it, um, all I've got to do is put a micro SD lead in there to USB to my PC, put it into load mode, drag and drop the new file on to any new features that are ever added in the future. Very, very quick and simple. I don't even have to power up the GameCube to do that. One thing I should mention, the GameCube library is quite big. Um, so you're probably going to need, you know, either a, a 500 gig SD card or even a terabyte. Um, depends on what you want to put on if you're going to put Game Boy games on there as well and um, the Game Boy player obviously is a nice little touch with this there's an extra doll file that you can add into the uh, SD card and therefore you can run um, GameCube you don't need the disc to run the GameCube player games um, but you know it's a cracking game um, played it on the um, Dreamcast uh, one of my favorites it's uh, such a shame there wasn't more to this game, more levels, because it's, um, it plays really well. It's just a far too short game. Yeah, so having a quick game of this, why not? Just to show you how smooth everything is. It, uh, you know, like I say, it doesn't affect the performance of the machine. Really pleased with it. So once I've had a go on this, um, just for a couple of minutes, I'm just going to show the operation of the um, Game Boy Player. Um, like you say, there is another file that you can drop into the uh, um, SD card that allows you, that, you know, that is selectable through the Swiss um, program, and then you can obviously load straight into your uh, game, GameCube, uh, Game Boy games, which is really nice and simple, nice and easy. It uh, tidies the machine up extensively, really. It's, it's a cracking package. This is obviously what you get. You load the doll in, um, as long as you've got a um, Game Boy Player hardware connected to the base of the GameCube, um, obviously it loads straight in like this. So, uh, you know, absolutely cracking. You know, it's uh, put this on full screen on your TV. Um, it's a nice addition. It's not something I'm going to play every day, um, but um, there are a few games that I'd quite like playing on the full screen. This isn't particularly one of them, but... Um, yeah, really great, really pleased. So, there we go. The peekaboo on the uh, GameCube. A cracking invention, very well executed and seamless. So, uh, if you've made it this far, I know it's a long one, but uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.